What is going on guys? Zuggy Fishing here, back to you with another video. Hope you guys are well. If you're new to the channel, make sure you guys smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and turn on that post notifications bell. Shout of the week goes to Lawson Watkins. Congrats for winning the shout of the week, buddy, guys. If you're new, look for a word or a phrase in quotation marks somewhere on the screen, somewhere throughout the video. And if you get it, leave it in the comment section down below. All right, guys, today we're going to be doing some pond hopping a little bit, trying to catch some fish. And we're going to be using the Guggen Squad Poppin' Frog. It's a brand new frog that they just released. I'm going to be reviewing it a little bit as well on other baits. So we're going to just try to slay out today, do the best as we can, try to catch some fish and review this poppin' frog. Let's get right into the video. All right, y'all, welcome to the video. Pond number one of the day. We fished at this pond in the last video, I believe, on the Google Maps challenge, if I'm not mistaken. It was pretty fire last time. It, it, it's definitely one of my favorite ponds now. So we're gonna see if we can go catch some fish today. Working the chatter bait right now, but later in the video, we're gonna be getting into the Guggen Squad Poppin' Frog. We're gonna be reviewing that a little bit, fishing with it, see if we can get some fish catches. We're gonna try to go after some good fish today and uh, some numbers as well. So uh, let's get right into the video and I uh, hope you guys enjoyed. If you're new, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Go follow me on Instagram at Zuggy Fishing. Make sure you like this video, and leave a comment down below. Look for that word of the week. All right guys, and make sure you guys go follow me on TikTok as well. All right, let's get right into this video. Yeah, that's what we're talking about. Oh yeah, let's go. Get up here. Dude, that is what we're talking about, ladies and gents. Dude, I saw this fish. That's what we're talking about. That is a solid largemouth. Guys, I took I took a break from the little poppin' frog. We're gonna try to catch a fish on that thing. But dude, this bass, nice bass by the way. Absolutely annihilated the chatterbait. Let's try to get some good lighting. Here we go. He's kind of got a cut on the side of him. Good mouth, good stuff. Really nice bass. So basically, I rolled the chatterbait through this pocket right here. And I like, I didn't really feel him hit it at first. I just kind of see him door, darting towards the side right here. And I set the hook, boom. Beautiful large mouth right here. That is what we're talking about, ladies and gents. Good stuff, great way to start the day. On the chatterbait, took a break from the old poppin' frog. All righty, I'll see you, buddy. They're not only near that structure, and they're not only up shallow, but they're in deeper water as well. In uh, previous ones of my videos, I have caught bass in deeper water here. I'm um, not a big one, but it, 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 it did come out from the deeper part of the water. And this one, the one I just caught, basically just made a parallel cast just like that, right along those lily pads. And I knew that there would be a fish there hanging out. And that's exactly what happened. See right here, he, he slammed it. I didn't really feel it at first, but I saw my line just darting to the side and I actually saw some bait fish jump. I'm not sure if the video picked that up, but I did see some bait fish jump, which is pretty, pretty awesome. But this pond is sick. As I said in one of like the previous videos, it almost reminds me of like a mini Florida, which is pretty, pretty awesome when you get, when you get that feeling. I actually love this pond a lot. Like I, I don't know if it's like pressured, pressured, but like this is my second time here, I think. And uh, fish seem to be active. They like the chatter bait. They like the frog, I did get some blow-ups. Basically what we're doing here, we're just trying to utilize any structure possible. So right here we have, we got, basically the whole idea of this pond is there's lily pads, there's grass mats, there's structure, um, such as trees that have fallen down and overhanging trees. And you know bass love all three, all four of those things. And that's what we're trying to utilize. They're not only near that structure and they're not only up shallow, but they're in deeper water as well. In uh, previous ones of my videos, I have caught bass in deeper water here. I'm um, not a big one, but it, 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 it did come out from the deeper part of the water. And this one, the one I just caught, basically just made a parallel cast just like that, right along those lily pads. And I knew that there would be a fish there hanging out. And that's exactly what happened. See right here, he, he slammed it. I didn't really feel it at first, but I saw my line just darting to the side and I actually saw some bait fish jump. I'm not sure if the video picked that up but I did see some bait fish jump, which is pretty, pretty awesome. And I was like, oh, maybe I have a bass. So I set the hook and I had one. Let's go, that was awesome. That is what we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen. 
So while fishing with this poppin' frog, we're gonna give her official review on that. Oh. So basically when I go to a pond, I like to mainly carry two to three setups with me. I have a frog and rod right here, um, the John B. Rig rod paired with the Shimano Corrado DC, just because that rod gets the frog out the farthest, which is what you need when you're frog fishing. No, can't have any short casts. And on my other setup is the moving bait setup, slash finesse setup. But the finesse setup, I usually have for, you know, Senkos, crossings like that. I usually have a spinning reel with some mono on it. That's what I usually use for my spinning setup. But my rod actually snapped my favorite Defender rod, the favorite rod brand, not my favorite rod, but like that actually snapped on me, which is not good. But I either use this setup for a moving bait, such as chatterbait, spinnerbait, or Sankos and things like that. So we're gonna see if we can catch another fish. Let's do it. All right, y'all, so right here, I have the St. Croix Bass X-Rod paired with the Shimano SLX 151XG bait casting reel. This, this is one of my favorite setups where uh, me fishing with Tate and fishing with Becca are actually giving one of these away right now. A brand new one, none of us use it before we're ordering it right from the store, so shipping it directly to you. But anyway, I have 20 pound fluorocarbon on this reel. It casts beautifully. I almost got birds nested right there because there's a bush behind me. But it casts absolutely beautiful, especially with this rod. So this rod is medium heavy, right? And I threw some 20 pound fluoro on this reel. But this rod, even though it's medium heavy, it's super light. It's like a super, super light setup, which is what I love about it. I can get baits out far because of the length. It is 6.6 and with this reel, it just casts it a mile. It's an awesome, awesome setup. All right, y'all, the Guggen Baits Poppin' Frog. This is what it looks like. It's brand new. It says, eat me on top. This thing's awesome. I mean, just initial reactions. It's a different, you know, profile than the other Filthy Frog, but this thing's pretty, pretty cool. So the other Filthy Frog, it's kind of just your standard hollow body. Now with this frog, it's called the Poppin' Frog. And that's because there is the cupped mouth shaped exactly like a popper. So basically, the hollow body frog's mouth is rounded and kind of pointed. Now this one has a cupped bill so that when you cast the bait in the water, just like this, and pop it, like pop your rod tip, see how there's like a little splash right there? I don't know if you could see that well, but boom, there's a little splash. That cupped mouth allows that splash, allowing for really, really good action. Now, the hollow body frog, does not have as explosive water and popping action as this frog, which is really, really why I like the popping frog better than a, a standard hollow body. This cup mouth, I believe, creates for a better action in the water and creates better of a, re a reaction strike, allowing the fish to know the frog's presence in the water. I love the I love the designs of the Guggenbaits frogs. This is kind of your standard bullfrog. And guys, a big tip for frog fishing, is the top of the frog, the colors and the design, it doesn't really matter in terms of catching fish. What matters is the bottom. So see how there's this intricate design pattern? That's what you wanna look for. Like these frogs are awesome because they have these patterns. Really, really awesome stuff. The top side of the frog does not matter at all. So if you guys are ever buying a frog and you know you see a cool design on top, it's attractive for the human eye, but not the fish eye. So that's a really good frog tip. Because in all reality, the fish don't see the top of the frog. They only see the bottom of it. And if they see those good colors on top, you know, if they just see a plain white, you know, that's not really that attractive. You wanna buy a frog with some bling to it, where the bottom of the bait is attractive, allowing for that reaction strike and the hookup ratios to increase. And another thing I love with this Guggen Squad Poppin' Frog is the length of the legs. The legs are a perfect length, stretching exactly to the head of the frog. And that's what you guys want to utilize when you're fishing and buying frogs. Especially if you buy a frog with the legs that are too long, the hookup ratio will actually decrease. And the reason for this is because when the bass blows up on it, these legs will get in the way and will allow them to grab the whole frog and take the hook. So Guggen Squad, Poppin' Frog, phenomenal stuff. Let's go catch some fish. Oh, 
yep, that's what we're talking about. You guys see that? That was so sick. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. That was so cool. Wait, was this, no way. This, is this the same fish I caught last video? No, it's not, it's not. Oh my gosh, that was so cool. This fish is a little bigger than that one. Oh my gosh, that was probably the coolest thing I've ever seen. That, that, was, that was what you call a true fisherman's cast right there. Oh my gosh. Did you see how hard I set the hook on that guy? Oh my gosh, it's so cool. Look at that bass. Late, oh, late, oh, oh, oh. Ladies and gents, literally first cast. You guys saw me flip that chatterbait, the chatterbait right under there, and I paused it. I let it sink to the bottom. I didn't straight retrieve it. And this guy, he was probably sitting on the bottom, waiting for something to come down off that tree. It plopped down, he slammed it. I saw my line going. I set that hook as hard as I can. That's what we're talking about, ladies and gents. First cast. Did I not say before, the overhanging tree is a phenomenal, phenomenal spot. Beautiful large mouth right here. That is what we're talking about, ladies and gents. Boom, that gets me hype. Let's go, guys. Beautiful large mouth. Let's get the release on her. See you, girl. Let's see if we can make it happen again. Now, I wonder, I'm always curious. I wonder if like I ever, if I threw a frog or something like that. Whether it'd be the same thing, whether he'd come up and get it was he was aggressive, or that would hit the bottom, you know what I mean? I don't know. Is that a carp I just spooked? Slurp that frog. At least we know they bite the frog. He didn't like get a good grip on it, you know what I mean? A few moments later. Guys, right now I have a chatterbait on from Z-Man, bluegill imitation. I do have a craw on the back, but it only has one craw because the other one came off. But basically, we're at a reservoir. I fish, I fish this reservoir a lot. It's not crazy pressured, but it still does have some pressure. So, and I doubt a lot of people throw chatterbaits. People who usually fish here are like, are, are like bobber and worm type fishermen. You know, they don't, they don't really fish, you know, baits, like big, like lures. But, Sankos, chatterbaits, frogs, they all work here. And we're trying to utilize banks here. And we can utilize deeper water. It's just tougher because there's so much water to cover. This is a deep, deep reservoir, 50 plus feet in the middle. That's why it's tough to work bottom baits. And the bottom is pretty much all grassy, which is not great. And I don't really like it a lot because you can't really fish, you know, a non weedless bait in that grass. I just love rolling the chatter bait out deep to see if I can get any attraction. And then they usually hit it on the bank the ones who usually sit up on the bank, like in this grass and stuff, they'll go after the frog and the chatterbait all the time. I've not fished a Sanko here in a while. However, the other day I did get a bite on a black Sanko, but it didn't produce. We're gonna see if we can get some more bites. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh that's a good fish, that's a giant, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, stay pinned, please stay pinned, please stay pinned, I didn't even know that was a fish, oh my gosh, that's huge, that's big, oh my god, he's in all this grass, please come here, please come here, please come here, please come here, no, do not come off, do not come off, do not come off, he's right there, he's right there, he's right there, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, come here, come here, come here, come here, come here. oh, get the rat out of here, oh, come here, where is he, no, no, did he come off, no, he's right here, no, 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 do not come off, do not come off, do not come off, Right here, oh, get up here. Let's go. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Yes. That's what we're talking about. That's what we're talking about. That is what we're talking about. 
Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. That's what we're talking about. That's a good fish. Big mouth on that chatter donk. Let's go, guys. That's what we're talking about. Let's get the release on this guy. See you, buddy. Let's go. Guys, I'm working this bait on the Shimano SLX 151XG, one of my favorite bait casting reels. We were actually giving one of these reels away on my Instagram, at Zuggy Fishing. So go check it out. All the qualifications to enter are there. Also fishing this on the St. Croix Bass X-Rod, 6.6, medium heavy, fishing on 20 pound fluoro. That's what we're talking about. Z-Man chatterbait with a little crawdad. That is what we're talking about. That's on this setup. Then on this setup, we have a frog. You guys saw the poppin' frog already. I thought it was pretty, pretty cool. We decided to switch to the filthy frog just to see if like there would be a difference in the approach and, and the fish catches. But we have that on the Shimano Corrado DC paired with the John B favorite rig rod. Hey y'all, thanks for watching. Make sure you guys like, subscribe, and comment down below and turn on that post notifications bell. We had a sick day out there today with some awesome catches. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you guys leave a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. All right guys, I'll see y'all next time. Be positive, just fish.